Hey, how's it going, you fiends? I'm Demi Bobemi. And I'm <laughs> dead inside. And welcome back to another salsa on her shirt. I mean, Brisinger. Great. <laughs> Just expose me to the world that I eat like a five year old. <laughs> <clears throat> Previously on Brisinger. Fuck. What if every time we just had like a really shitty like previously, but it wasn't even like like previously like mm -hmm. like somewhat okay like movie voice, but it was just like up close to the microphone and like fucking peeked out <laughs> and just like sounds like a twelve year old being like previously on Brasinger. <laughs> oh my god! I think everyone would just say, "Clicking off now." Goodbye. Speaking of clicking off. To click you off. I meant to delete you. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. I was gonna say I was gonna cancel you. No, get that cancel culture out of here. <laughs> but you already deleted me, so like. About to get that delete culture. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what the kids are gonna say next? Well, it has to be an alliteration, because cancel culture. So, delete. Degenerates. <laughs> mm, no. <laughs> it's the only it's be like around culture. What's a what's a like something around generation? Like what's a, a deletion word for like gen with this starts with a j or a g. Uh delete. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Give us a recap. What happened in the last episode? I thought it was going to be bigger <laughs> than it wasn't anything. <laughs> okay. We've all heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Aragon was with Ormus. <laughs> and they were like, well, I've got questions. Well, Aragon said that. And then Ormus said, I might I got have questions. <laughs> <laughs> I might have I some might questions. Have, I might have some answers. And then Aragon said, who's my daddy? Kind of. Not really. I don't know. It's like a whole thing. Um, and then Ormus was like, behind door one, we have your answer. <laughs> and it wasn't more Zan. It was Brom. Nice. Nice wrap up. <laughs> Ooh, don't restart. Stop. You'd think I'd never used technology say, like, before. Behind one of these doors, mm -hmm. we have your father, like, choose a door. I don't know. I just said behind b door one, <laughs> like, the worst game show ever. There's, like, three doors, and it's like, behind door one is your prize. Which door would you like to select? Because <laughs> you don't really have a choice here. D door door one. Congratulations. You win. There just is only door one. Pick a door. <laughs> Pick a door. <laughs> Any door. Chapter 46. Two lovers doomed. Wonder. I mean, I know we're gonna find out, but I wonder if it's like Brahmin, Aragon, and Arya. <laughs> <laughs> Just skips over everything, goes to <laughs> Aragon, trying to court Arya. What's the other word? Swoon. Sw when you mm. try to like woo a girl, is it? It's called woo. Yeah. It's not called like swoo or anything or swoon. No, or? if you're swooning, you're, you're swooning for a wooer. You could be. All right. <laughs> you have to like break it down like that to me. Like I'm five. You're swooning for a wooer. Okay. You're swooning for a wooer. I already know. Okay. Just making sure you knew. Aragon gaped at the gold dragon. But how? He exclaimed <laughs> before either Glader or Oramus could respond. Aragon whirled towards Saphira with both his mind and his voice. He said, you knew? You knew, and yet you let me believe Morzan was my father this whole time? Even though it, even though I, I, his chest heaving, Aragon stuttered and trailed off, unable to speak coherently. Unbidden, memories of Brom flooded through him, washing away his other thoughts. He reconsidered the meaning of Brom's every word and expression, and in that instant, a sense of rightness settled over Aragon. He still wanted explanations, but he did not need them in order to determine the veracity of Glader's claim, for in his bones, Aragon felt the truth of what Glader had said. Aragon started as Ormus touched him on the shoulder. Aragon, you need to calm yourself, said the elf in a soothing tone. Remember, remember the techniques I taught you for meditating. Control your breathing and concentrate upon letting the tension drain out of your limbs into the ground beneath you. Yes, like that. Now again, and breathe deeply. 
I feel like he was like kind of calm. Like he was like, no, Brahm, Brahm is my father. It makes sense. I think he was just kind of like in a moment like, of like, he was just sitting there being like, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, calm down. Hormus is like, wow, what a great, like past 30 minutes, watch him fall off of his dragon, getting off of his dragon, all tired and shit. Like this little child man. And then like yell at me and tell me to basically like fuck off. And then he's like, he's our only hope. And I was just sitting there being like, <laughs> <laughs> Aragon's hands grew still, and his heartbeat slowed as he followed Oramus's instructions. Once his thoughts had cleared, he looked at Saphira again, and in a soft voice, said, You knew? Saphira lifted her head from the ground. Oh, Aragon, I wanted to tell you. It pained me to see how Murtag's words tormented you, and yet to be unable to help you. I tried to help. I tried so many times, but like Ormus and Glader, I too swore in the ancient language to keep Brahm's identity a secret from you, and I could not break my oath. When, when did he tell you? Aragon asked, so agitated that he continued speaking out loud. The day after the Urgles attacked us outside of Tyrm while you were still unconscious. Was that also when he told you how to contact the Varden in Gilead? Yes. Before I knew what Brom wished to say, he had me swear to never speak of this wish. You are, wait, whoa, 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 wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I knew what Brom wished to say. He had me swear to never speak of this with you unless you found out on your own. To my regret, I agreed. Or before I knew what Brom wished to say. What an idiot she was. She was like a baby still. She idiot couldn't even baby. like. <laughs> Is there anything else he told you? Demanded Aragon, his anger rising again. She couldn't fucking tell him. Any other secrets I had to know? Like that Murtag isn't my only sibling? Or perhaps how to defeat Galbatorix? <laughs> During the two days Brahm and I spent hunting the Urgles, Brahm recounted the details of his life to me so that if he died, and if ever you learned of your relation to him, his son could know what kind of a man he was and why he had acted as he did. Also, Brahm gave me a gift for you. A gift? A memory of him speaking to you as your father, and not as Brom, the storyteller. Before Saphira shares this memory with you, however, said Oramus, and Glader realized she had not allowed the elf to hear her words. It would be best, I think, if you knew how this came to pass. Will you listen to me for a while, Aragon? Aragon hesitated, unsure of what he wanted, then nodded. Lifting his crystal goblet, Oramus drank of his wine, then returned the goblet to the table and said, as you know, both Brom and Morzan were my apprentices. Brom, who was a younger by three years, held Morzan in such high esteem, he allowed Morzan to belittle him, order him about, and otherwise treat him most shamefully. In a raspy voice, Aragon said, It's hard to imagine Brom letting anyone order him about. Ormus inclined his head in a quick, bird-like dip. And yet so it was. Bromed. Bromed. <laughs> Brom just brommed around. <laughs> Brom loved Morzan as a brother, despite his behavior. It was only once Morzan betrayed the riders to Galbatorix and the Forsworn killed Saphira, Brom's dragon, that Brom realized the true nature of Morzan's character. As strong as Brom's affection for Morzan had been, it was like a candle before an inferno compared with the hatred that replaced it. Brom swore to thwart Morzan, however, and wherever he could to undo his accomplishments and reduce his ambitions to bitter regrets. I cautioned Brom against a path so full of hate and violence, but he was mad with grief from the death of Saphira, and he would not listen to me. In the decades that followed, Brom's hatred never weakened, nor did he falter in his efforts to depose Galbatorix, kill the Forsworn, and above all else, to repay Morzan the hurts he had suffered. Brom was persistence embodied. His name, a nightmare for the forest sworn, and a beacon of hope for those who still had the spirit to resist the Empire. Ormus looked toward the white line of the horizon and took another draught draft of his wine. <laughs> <laughs> I am rather proud of what he achieved on his own and without the aid of his dragon. It is always heartening for a teacher to see one of his students excel, however it might be. But I digress. It so happened, then, that some twenty years ago... The Varden began to receive reports from their spies within the Empire about the activities of a mysterious woman known only as the Black Hand. My mother, said Aragon. Your mother and Murtag's, said Oramis. 
At first, the Varden knew nothing about her, save that she was extremely dangerous and that she was loyal to the Empire. In the time, or in time, and after a great deal of bloodshed, it became apparent that she served Morzan and Morzan alone, and that he had come to depend upon her to carry out his will throughout the Empire. Upon learning of this, Brahm set out to kill the Black Hand and so to strike at Morzan. So instead they had a baby? <laughs> Since the Varden could not predict where your mother might appear next, Brom traveled to Morzan's castle and spied upon it until he was able to devise a means of infiltrating the hold. Where was Morzan's castle? Is, not was. The castle still stands. Galbatorix uses it for himself now. It is situated among the foothills of the Spine, near the northwestern shore of Leona Lake, hidden well away from the rest of the land. Aragon said, Jode told me that Brom snuck into the castle by pretending to be one of the servants. He did, and it was no easy task. Morzan had impregnated his fortress with hundreds of spells designed to protect him from his enemies. Nice word choice. <laughs> He also forced everyone who served him to swear oaths of fealty, and often with their true names. However, after much experimentation, Brahm managed to find a flaw in Morzan's wards that allowed him to procure a position as a gardener on his estate, and it was in this guise he first met your mother. Glancing down at his hands, Aragon said, and then he, and then he seduced her to hurt Morzan, I suppose. Not at all, replied Oramis. That may have been his atten- intention to begin with. But then something happened neither he nor your mother anticipated. They fell in love. Whatever affection your mother once had for Morzan had vanished by then, expunged by his cruel treatment of her and their newborn child, Murtag. I do not know the exact sequence of events, but at some point Brahm revealed his true identity to your mother. Instead of, betray- instead of betraying him, she began to supply the Varden with information about Gabatorix, Morzan, and the rest of the empire. The fuck texted me. You know what I love? Okay, you're blocked now. Who? <laughs> I love a good bad guy goes good story. You know what I mean? And it's a bad girl. Gone good. But said Aragon, didn't Morzan have her swear Osa fealty to him in the ancient language? How could she turn against him? A smile appeared on Oramus' thin lips. His thin, (laughs) stupid little paper lips. (laughs) Stupid little lips. She could. Or wait. She could because Morzan allowed her somewhat more freedom than his other servants so that she could use her own ingenuity and initiative while carrying out his orders. Hmm. In his arrogance, Morzan believed that her love for him would ensure her loyalty better than any oath. Also, she was not the same woman who had bound herself to Morzan. Becoming a mother and meeting Brahm altered her character to such a degree that her true name changed, which released her from her previous commitments. If Morzan had been more careful, if, for example, he had cast a spell that would alert him if ever she failed to abide by her promises, he would have known the moment he lost control over her. But that was always a shortcoming of Morzan's. He would devise a cunning spell but then it would fail because, in his impatience, he overlooked some crucial, de- crucial detail. Aragon frowned. Why didn't my mother leave Morzan once she had the chance? After all, she, after all she had done in Morzan's name, she felt it was her duty to help the Varden. But more importantly, she could not bring herself to abandon Murtag to his father. Couldn't she have taken him with her? If it had been within her power, I'm sure she would have. Morzan realized that the child gave him a vast amount of control over your mother. He forced her to sur- he forced her to surrender Murtag to a wet nurse, and only allowed her to visit him at infrequent er- intervals. Fuck, I can like not read today. What Morzan did not know is that during those intervals, she also visited Brom. Ormus turned to watch a pair of swallows, caverning in the blue sky. <laughs> Cool. He's like in the middle of to like, that's like if I was just like reading and then I just went. Oh. Like, K. sorry, I was watching two fucking dung beetles eat <laughs> shit. In profile, his delicate slanted features reminded Aragon of a hawk or a sleek cat. Still gazing at the swallows, Ormus said, not even your mother could anticipate where Morzan would send her next, nor when she would return to his castle. 
Therefore, Brahm had to remain on Morrison's estate for extended lengths of time if he wished to see her. For an eye on three years, Brahm served as one of Morzan's gardeners. Now and then, he would slip away to send a message to the Varden or to communicate with his spies throughout the Empire. But other than that, he did not leave the castle grounds. Three years? Wasn't he afraid that Morzan might see him and recognize him? I was just about to ask the same thing. Ormus lowered his gaze from the heavens, <laughs> returning it to Aragon. Brom was most adept at disguising himself, and had been many years since he and Morrison had last stood face to face. Ah. Aragon twisted the goblet between his fingers, studying how the light refracted through the crystal. Then what happened? Then, said Ormus, one of Brom's agents in Tyrm made contact with a young scholar by the name of Jode, who wished to join the Varden and who claimed to have discovered evidence of a hitherto secret tunnel that led into the elf-built portion of the castle in Urubayan. Brom tightly felt that Jode's discovery was too important to ignore, so he packed his bags, made his excuses to his fellow servants, and then departed for Tyrm with all possible haste. What of my mother? She had left a month before on another of Morzan's missions. Struggling to weld a cohesive hole out of the fragmented accounts, he had heard from various people, Aragon said, So then, Brahm met with Jode, <clears throat> and once he was convinced the tunnel was real, he arranged for one of the Varden to attempt to steal the three dragon eggs Galbatorix was holding at Urubayan. Or Mrs. Face darkened. Unfortunately, for reasons that have never become entirely clear, the man they selected for the task, a certain Hefring of Furnost, succeeded in filching only one egg, Zephyrus from Galbatorix's treasury, and once he had possession of it, he fled from both the Varden and Galbatorix's servants. Because of his betrayal, Brom had to spend the next seven months chasing Hefring back and forth across the land in a desperate attempt to recapture Zephyra. And during that time, my mother traveled in secret to Carvajal, where she gave birth to me. Five months later? Ormus nodded. You were conceived just before your mother set forth upon her last mission. As a result, Brom knew nothing of her condition while he was pursuing Hefring and Sephira's egg. When Brom and Morzan finally confronted each other in Gilead, Morzan asked Brom whether he had been responsible for the disappearance of his black hand. It, was, it is understandable that Morzan would s suspect Brom's involvement, since Brom had arranged the deaths of several of the Forsworn. Brom, of course, immediately immediately concluded that something terrible had befallen your mother. He later told me it was that belief which gave him the strength and fortitude he needed to kill Morzan and his dragon. Once they were dead, Brom took Zephyr's egg from Morzan's corpse, for Morzan had already located Hefring and seized the egg from him, and then Brom left the city, pausing only long enough to hide Zephyr, where he knew the Varden would eventually find, find her. So that's why Jode thought Brom died in Gilead, said Aragon. Again, Oramus nodded. Stricken by fear, Brom dared not wait for his companions. Even if your mother was alive and well, Brom worried that Galbatorix would decide to make Selina his own black hand, and that she would never again have the chance to escape her service to the Empire. Aragon felt tears wet his eyes. How Brom must have loved her, to leave everyone behind as soon as he knew she was in danger. But she was like, already dead. At that point. Was she? I think so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, because uh, Morzan said, like, disappearance. Oh, okay. No, okay. Never mind. We don't. Nobody knows at that point, I guess. From, Gili know. from Gilead, Brom rode straight to Morzan's estate, stopping only to sleep. For all his speed, however, he was still too slow. When he reached the castle, he discovered that your mother had returned a fortnight prior, sick and wary from her mysterious journey. <clears throat> Morzan's healers tried to save her, but in spite of their efforts, she had passed into the void just hours before Brahm arrived at the castle. He never saw her again? Aragon asked, his throat tightening. Never again, Oramis paused, and his expression softened. Losing her was, I think, almost as difficult for Brahm as losing his dragon and it quenched much of the fire within his soul. He did not give up, though, nor did he go mad, as he had for a time when the Forsworn slew Zephyr's namesake. Instead, he decided to, instead, 
He decided to discover the reason for your mother's death and to punish those who were responsible if he could. He questioned Morzan's healers and forced them to describe your mother's ailments. From what they said, and also from the gossip he heard among the servants on the estate, Brom guessed the truth about your mother's pregnancy. Possessed of that hope, he rode to the one place he knew to look, your mother's home in Carvajal, and there he found you in the care of your aunt and uncle. Brom did not stay in Carvajal, however. As soon as he assured himself that no one in Carvajal knew your mother had been the Black Hand, and that you were no in, and that you were in no Im, 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 imminent, yeah, and that you were in no imminent danger, Brom returned in secret to Farthendor, where he revealed himself to Daenor, who was the leader of the Varden at that time. Daenor was astounded to see him, for until that moment, everyone had believed that Brom had perished in Gilead. Brom convinced Daenor to keep his presence a secret from all but a select few, and then Aragon raised a finger. Excuse me, sir. But why? Why pretend to be dead? Brom wanted to live long enough to help instruct the new rider, and he knew the only way he could avoid being assassinated in retaliation for killing Morzan would be if he was if, already dead. Would be if Galbatorix believed he was already dead and buried. Also, Brom hoped to avoid attracting unwanted, unwarranted attention to Carvajal. He intended to settle there in order to be close to you, as indeed he did but he was determined that the Empire should not learn of your existence as a result. <clears throat> While in Farthendur, Brom helped the Varden negotiate the agreement with Queen Izanzadi over how the elves and the humans would share custody of the egg and how the new rider would be trained, if and when the egg should hatch. Then Brom accompanied Arya as she carried the egg from Farthendur to Elismira. When he arrived, he told Glader and me what I have now told you so that the truth about your parentage would not be forgotten if he should die. That was the last time I ever saw him. From here, Brom returned to Carvajal where he introduced himself as a bard and storyteller. What happened thereafter, you know better than I. That's bizarre because like, what if Aragon never would have got an egg and Brom would have just like died from like whatever, mm -hmm. what, you know, like whatever, whatever. <laughs> just like, been like out and about and fucking fell off a cliffside and just fucking died or like who knows yeah would like Oramus still have sought out Aragon and then told him no he would have just never known you think yeah because wasn't Oramus like saying that he wasn't going to tell Aragon unless like it had already come up like unless he had already found out information about his parentage yeah, so we both promised with the most binding of oaths that we would never reveal you to you the identity of your father or your half brother, nor discuss your lineage unless you had ever discover unless you had discovered the truth on your own or unless the identity of your relatives had placed you in danger. So he just never would have known. Nope. <clears throat> sure wouldn't have, because he never would have met Murtag. Well, never would have met Murtag. Like, why would he ever discover that on his own? Unless, right. like, his uncle was able to tell him some shit, and then he discovered it that way. But then, like, why would Ormus, like, give a shit about that? Mm -hmm. Unless Ormus was like, oh, I can feel it that he, like, through the ancient the language. <laughs> through the ancient language, I can feel that he figured it out. Like, I'm going to ride to him on my dragon and tell him. No. Yeah. So, like, why would Brom tell Ormus? Because I guess if he were in danger, Ormus would know. You know, like if Galbatorix had targeted him, Ormus would know. You know what I mean? But then, like, that means that he wanted it to be passed on to Aragon. I just feel like, why only if he figured it out himself, and why only if he were in danger? Like, why not just, like... At an arbitrary age. Yeah. Then, at that point, just be like, eh, like, fucking 18 or something, tell him. I don't know, like, 23? <clears throat> That it's like doesn't make sense with if the store like it doesn't make sense in the parameters of like everything else if Aragon had not become a writer. So it's like only through the perspective that Aragon would become a writer, which that's weird that like Brom would ever expect that. Right. Right? Yeah. Cause then it's like Brom knew he was going to be a writer or something. Right? But he couldn't. He couldn't know that Aragon would ever make it to Oramus. And then why would, because or, Ormus would never seek out Aragon. When it seek out some little farm boy. 
Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Ormus fell silent for a time. No one spoke. Staring at the ground, Aragon reviewed everything Ormus had told him and tried to sort out his feelings. At last he said, And Brom really is my father, not Morzan. I mean, if my mother was Morzan's cor- consort, then he trailed off too embarrassed to continue. Like, still could be a daddy. Yeah. His his supposed real daddy actually is his secret daddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call a double whammy. Fuck. Double daddy. Whoa. <laughs> double secret daddy whammy. <laughs> I don't like those words together. I feel like that could be a search on Pornhub. You need to get something. I'm scared. Also, let me know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> you are your father's son, Ormus said. Cool. And your father is Brom. Of that, there is no doubt. No doubt whatsoever, Orma shook his head. None. A sense of giddiness gripped Aragon, and he realized he had been holding his breath and passed out. The end. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> he just went unconscious. That's how we end a chapter. <laughs> Exhaling, he said, I think I understand why. He paused to fill his lungs. <laughs> <laughs> why Brom didn't say anything about this before I found Safira's egg. But why didn't he tell me afterward? And why did... J- he swear you and Safira to, Safira to such secrecy. Didn't he want to claim me as his son? Was he ashamed of me? Oof. <laughs> don't ask questions you don't want the answer to, Eric Gunn. <laughs> I cannot pretend to know the reasons for everything Brom did, Aragon. However, of this much I am confident. Brom wanted nothing more than to name you his son and to raise you, but he dared not but he dared not reveal that you were related, lest the Empire should find out and try to hurt him through you. His prudence was warranted too. Look how Gabotorx strove to capture your cousin so that he could use Roran to force you to surrender. Brom could have told my uncle, Aragon protested. I Gera, have a question. Gera wouldn't have betrayed Brom to the Empire. So... Brom didn't want to tell Aragon he was his secret daddy unless he was in danger. Couldn't you argue once he had that fucking dragon, he was in danger? Sure. But like, you know what I mean? Because in Galvatore's... He was like under Brom's protection. I don't get why he didn't tell him when, like when he like rubbed his hand and he was like, I'm a rider and I'm your dad. (laughs) Your secret daddy. You know, like why didn't he say that? I don't know. I don't know why he just, like, didn't fucking tell him. I need the reason. Think, Aragon. Think, Demi. Rude. If you had been living with Brom, and if a word of Brom's survival had reached the ears of Galbatorix's spies, you both would have had to flee Carva Hall for fear of your lives. By keeping the truth hidden from you, Brom hoped to protect you from those dangers. He didn't succeed. <laughs> we had to flee Carva Hall anyway. Yes, said Oramis, Brom's mistake as it were, although I judge it has yielded more good than ill, was that he could not bear to separate himself entirely from you. If he had had the strength to refrain from returning to Carvajal, you never would have found Saphira's egg. The Razak would not have killed your uncle, and many things that were not would have been, and many things that are would not be. Wait, what? Wait, how could he have not found the egg? It's chill. I can't. Aragon clenched his jaw as a tremor coursed through him. And after he learned Saphira had hatched for me, Ormus hesitated, and his calm expression became somewhat troubled. I'm not sure, Aragon. It may have been that Brom was still trying to protect you from his enemies, and he did not tell you for the same reason he did not bring you to the Varden straight away. Because it would have been more than you were ready for. Perhaps he was planning to tell you just before you went to the Varden, If I had to guess, though, I would guess that Brom held his tongue, not because he was ashamed of you, but because he had become accustomed to living with his secrets and was loath to part with them. And because, and this is no more than speculation, because he was uncertain how you might react to this revelation. By your own account, you were not that well acquainted with Brom before you left Carvajal with him. It is quite possible he was afraid that you might... Hate him if he told you he was your father. I mean, fair enough. 
Hate him, <laughs> exclaimed Aragon. I wouldn't have hated him, although I might not have believed him. And would you have trusted him after such a revelation? Aragon bit the inside of his cheek. No, I wouldn't have. Continuing, Ormus said, Brom did the best he could in what were incredibly trying circumstances. Before all else, it was his responsibility responsibility to keep the two of you alive and to teach and advise you, Aragon, so that you would not use your power for selfish means, as Galbatorix has done. In that, Brom acquitted himself with distinction. He may not have been the father you wished him to be, but he gave you as great an inheritance as any son has ever had. It was no more than he would have done for whoever became the new writer. That does not diminish its value, Ormus pointed out, but you are mistaken. Brom did more for you than he would have for anyone else. You need only think of how he sacrificed himself to save your life to know the truth of that. The truth? <laughs> the truth of that. I think like there was a little bit more to what Ormus was saying there about he gave you as great an inheritance as any son has ever had. Mm-hmm. I think that's like being a dragon rider. I get it. He was a dragon rider. Now you're a dragon rider. That's like an inheritance. And he imparted onto you vital dragon rider skills. Shit. Knowledge. Dragon rider knowledge. With the nail of his right index finger, Aragon picked at the edge of the table, following a faint ridge formed by one of the rings in the wood. And it was it really was an accident that Arya sent Sephira to me. It was, Ormus confirmed. But it was not entirely a coincidence. Instead of transporting the egg to the father, Arya made it appear before the son. Does that answer your question? Yeah. About how <laughs> Aragon wouldn't have found the egg? Yeah. How could that be if she had no knowledge of me? Or Mrs. Thin Shoulders rose and fell. DNA. <laughs> Despite thousands of years of study, we still cannot predict or explain all the effects of magic. Thanks for that explanation. I also feel like DNA is the answer. DNA. <laughs> you know. Aragon continued to finger the small ridge in the edge of the table. God, I hate that. Like, <laughs> Finger his beard, finger the table. Christopher just... Pillion has got an obsession with fingering things. <laughs> <laughs> or like, I don't know, when, when you like... <clears throat> The words of body parts used as like an adverb. <coughs> is that correct? An adverb? Ooh, like when your X ray noses, nuzzles, and pounces up against you. No. It's so warm. No. Well, noses, I guess. Yeah. Like, yeah. whatever. But I was thinking of like in Fight Club when he was talking about like a cut on the roof of your mouth that you can't stop like tonguing or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> words like that. I'm about to. Tongue punch your fart box. Ew, I hate that <laughs> so much. <laughs> I've never liked it. I have a father, he thought. What? I watched him die. Ooh. And I had no idea who he was to me. My parents, he said. Were they ever married? What? I know why you ask, Aragon. And I do not know if my answer will satisfy you. Marriage is not an elvish custom. And the subtleties of it often escape me. No one joined Brahms and Selina's hands in marriage, but I know that they consider themselves to be husband and wife. If you are wise, you will not worry that others of your race may call you a bastard, but rather be content to know that you are your parents' child and that they both gave you their lives that you might live. Or, and that they both gave their lives that you might live. Um, I don't know how I said that before. I feel like it was fine before, but Maybe. whatever. Um at first, when he was like, were they married? I was like, who gives a shit, Aragon? That's then pretty I- much what Ormus has said. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also understand his question because of Ormus was like, well, I mean, like, don't worry about being a bastard. You know what I mean? Because, like, I forgot the time frame this is in, that this is not modern day. Aragon Snow. <laughs> 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 it surprised Aragon how calm he felt. His entire life he had speculated about the identity of his father. When Murtag had claimed it was Morzan, the revelation had shocked Aragon as deeply as had the death of Garrow. Wait, 
at the beginning didn't Aragon at the like the very very first book didn't Aragon talk about like how he once daydreamed that his father was like a great hero or a dragon rider or something I think so he was like this magical man yeah he was right fuck also I was right because I, I remember like saying something like oh wouldn't it be like wild if like Brom was his dad and, and then, then he like, was and Brom was a dragon rider and yeah. wouldn't that be wild <clears throat> I'm just like psychic with books do you know what I mean shit <laughs> Glader's counterclaim that Aragon's father was Brom had also shocked him, but the shock did not seem to have lasted, perhaps because, this time, the news was not as upsetting. Calm as he was, Aragon thought that it might be many years before he was certain of his feelings toward either of his parents. My father was a writer, and my mother was Morzan's court consort <laughs> and black hand. <laughs> Could I tell Naswada, he asked, or misspread his hands. Tell him whoever you wish. The secret is now yours to do with as you please. I doubt you would be any more danger if the whole world knew you were Brahm's heir. Murtag, Aragon said. He believes we're full brothers. He told me so in the ancient language. And I am sure Galbatorx does as well. It was the twins who figured out that Murtag's mother and your mother were one and the same person. And this they conveyed to the king. But they could not have informed him of Brahm's involvement for there was no one among the Vardan who was privy to that information. Aragon glanced up as a pair of swallows swooped by overhead, and he allowed himself a wry smile. Why do you smile? Oramus asked. I'm not sure you would understand. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> it's like the Joker being yeah, like, you wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> what the fuck? Why, why are you smiling? <laughs> you wouldn't get it. <laughs> Oramus is like, Okay. The elf folded his hands in his laps, in his lap, in his laps, <laughs> in his multiple, multiple laps. <laughs> Who? Put it on. Do not disturb, you, you fucking noob. <clears throat> uh, sorry, person that disliked my post on Twitter. You got blocked. <laughs> no, it's me. <laughs> the elf folded his hands in his lap. I might not. That is true. But then you cannot know for certain unless you try to explain. It took Aragon a while to find the right words he needed. I did, that's, that's not what the sentence says at all. That's probably what it was trying to convey, <clears> though. <throat> it took Aragon a while to find the words he needed. Hmm. You listening to the dogs crunching around up there? No, I was trying to find the words I needed. Oh. When I was younger... No, oh, shit. He d literally just talks about him imagining his dad. <laughs> when I was younger... Before all of this, he gestured at <laughs> Sephira and Ormus and Glader and the world in general. He's like, all of this. <clears throat> I used to amuse myself by imagining that because of her great wit and beauty, my mother had been taken in among the courts of Galbatorix's nobles. I imagined that she traveled from city to city and supped with the earls and the ladies in their halls and that, well, she had fallen desperately in love with a rich and powerful man. But for some reason, she was forced to hide me from him. So she gave me to Garrow and Marion for safekeeping. And one day, she would return and tell me who I was, and that I had that she had never wanted to leave me behind. That is not so different from what happened," said Oramis. "No, it isn't. But I imagine that my mother and my father were people of importance, and that I was someone of importance as well. Fate gave me what I wanted, but the truth. Why do I keep saying truth? <laughs> I don't know. Fate gave me what I wanted, but the truth of it." is not as grand or as happy as I thought it would be. I was smiling at my own ignorance, I suppose, and also at the unlikeliness of everything that has befallen me. Be careful what you wish for. Just wish for whatever you want and then smile at your past ignorance <laughs> and laugh in the face of fate, fate. and shit on destiny. <laughs> A light breeze swept across the clearing feathering the grass at their feet and stirring the branches of the, of the forest around them. Aragon watched the fluttering of the grass for a few moments, then slowly asked, asked, was my mother a good person? I could not say Aragon. Nobody's good. Humans are trash. <laughs> We're all kind of shitty, so. The, well, not him. Elves aren't. 
Well, you're all kind of shitty. That's what he was thinking. But you were thinking we're all kind of shitty. Because I'm a human. The humans are just trash. (laughs) The events of her life were complicated. It would be foolish and arrogant of me to presume to pass judgment on one I know so little of. Hear that, Demi? (laughs) (laughs) Not going to stop, though. (laughs) (laughs) But I need to know. Aragon clasped his hands, pressing his fingers between the calluses on his knuckles. When I asked Brom if he had known her, he had said that she was proud and dignified and that she always helped the poor and those less fortunate than her. How could she, though? How could she be that person also, and also be the black hand? Joe told me stories about some of the things, horrible, terrible things she did while she was in Morzan's service. Was she evil then? Did she not care if Galbatorix ruled or not? Why did she go with Morzan in the first place? Oramis paused. Love can be a terrible curse, Aragon. It can make you overlook even the largest flaws in a person's behavior. I doubt that your mother was fully aware of Morzan's true nature when she left Carvajal with him, and once she had, he would not have allowed her to disobey his wishes. She became his slave in all but name, and it was only by changing her very identity that she was able to escape his control. But Jode said that she enjoyed what she did as a black hand. An expression of faint disdain altered Ormus's features. Accounts of past atrocities are often exaggerated and distorted. That much you should keep in mind. No one but your mother knows exactly what she did, nor why, nor how <laughs> she felt about it. And she is not still among the living to explain herself. Whom should I believe, though? pleaded Aragon. Brom or Jode? When you asked Brom about your mother, he told you what he thought were her most important qualities. My advice would be to trust in his knowledge of her. If that does not quell your doubts, remember that whatever crimes she may have committed while acting as the Hand of Morzan, ultimately, your mother sided with the Varden and went to extraordinary lengths to protect you. Knowing that, you should not torment yourself further about the nature of her character. Propelled by the breeze, a spider hanging from a gossamer strand of silk drifted past Aragon, rising and falling on the invisible eddies of air. When the spider had floated out of view, Aragon said, The first time we visited Tronchim, the fortune teller Angela told me that it was Brahms wired to fail at everything he attempted, except for killing Morzan. Wired. Fate. Mm -hmm. In the ancient language, just in case you forgot, because it's been like a book since we've heard that (laughs) word. Oramis inclined his head. One might think that. Another might conclude that Brahm achieved many great and difficult things. It depends upon how you choose to view the world. There's Angela's shitty way, or there's my (laughs) fantastic golden dragon way. The words of fortune tellers are rarely easy to decipher. Wow. Okay. Fucking just kill me. (laughs) The words of fortune tellers are rarely easy to decipher. It has been my experience that their predictions are never conducive to peace of mind. If you wish to be happy, Aragon, think not of what is to come, nor of that which you have no control over, but rather of the now, and of that which you are able to change. It sounds like, what's a fucking party? Just fucking what? occupy your mind with the now, bro. Yo, take this pill. Oops, oops, oops. I don't, I what? Or- Ormus is a party elf. I think he does hard elf drugs. Yeah. <laughs> obviously obviously I thought that was pretty apparent sorry he's like getting fucking sidetracked by fucking birds in the fucking, <laughs> fucking air tripping hard <laughs> he's like think not of what things could not have been but instead of what they are and what they would not have been if they weren't birds <laughs> it's Ormus that right now that's about right a thought occurred to Heracon then Blagin, he said referring to the white raven who was Queen Islanzadi's companion. Thank you for reminding me because it's been a book and a half. He knows about Brahm as well, doesn't he? One of Oramis's sharp eyebrows lifted. Does he? I never spoke of it to him. He's a fickle creature and not to be relied upon. The day Saphir and I left for the burning plains, he recited a riddle to me. I can't remember every line, but it was something about one of two being one while one might be two. I think he might have been hinting that Murtag and I were sharing a mom. I think he might have been hinting that Murtag and I only share a single parent. 
It is not impossible, said Oramis. Blagin was here in Ellesmere when Brom told me about you. I would not be surprised if that sharp-beaked thief happened to be perched on a nearby tree during our conversation. Eavesdropping is an unfortunate habit of his. It might also be that his riddle was a result of one of his, sporad one of his sporadic fits of foresight. A moment later, Glader stirred, and Oramis turned and glanced back at the golden dragon. The elf rose from his chair with a graceful motion, saying, Fruit, nuts, and bread are fine fare, but after your trip, you should have something more substantial to fill your belly. I have a soup that needs tending. I have a soup that needs tending simmering in my hut, but please do not bestir yourself. I will bring it to you when it is ready. His footsteps soft upon the grass, Ormus walked to his bark-covered house and disappeared inside. As a carved door closed, Glader huffed out his breath and closed his eyes, seeming to fall asleep, and all was silent save the save the rustle of the wind-tossed branches. That's kind of random. What? He's like, eavesdropping is an unfortunate habit of his. It might also be that riddle was a result of one of his sporadic fits of foresight. There's some soup in my kitchen. Would you like some? <laughs> I feel like but he just like stands up too. like it's not that he just like looks at Aragon he like done there's some soup in my kitchen I'll bring some when it is ready and then Aragon's like okay he's done talking about that he was over guess it. what the next chapter is called butt buddies inheritance oh, fuck ow <laughs> <laughs> So when Aragon was like, oh my God, is she evil? Like what's happening? I don't feel like good. And I mean, in this book, it kind of seems like good and evil are like two black and white, like separate things. No. You can't just say, no, I'm not finished. So it seems like things are like surface level being portrayed as like good or evil. And I feel like that's how Aragon sees it. Yeah. And so I feel like that's kind of the lens that we see it through, but it's definitely more of like a sliding scale. Spectrum. A spectrum, if you will, between good and evil. Because I can't <laughs> imagine anyone being truly evil and having absolutely no redeemable or redeeming like qualities about them. Yeah, I can't see like an evil woman having a baby. No. I definitely so can't they, see they Voldemort having a baby. <coughs> Listen. So they challenge your perspective of what is right and wrong. In the last book, when Ormus was asking Aragon, well, isn't this war going to cause more suffering than if you just shut the fuck up and sit down, little baby dragon boy? <laughs> like, they have already, like, expressed that also, Orma said that, like, well, Galbert Torx doesn't see himself as an evil guy. Mm -hmm. And even Murtag has already said, like, this, you should listen to what he has to say, Aragon. Like, not everything he sa says sounds so bad. And then he's even saying that the other, the older writers, or, like, the old generation mm -hmm. of writers were fat bureaucrats, like, that needed to be overthrown. And so they're already, like, questioning the morality of, like, this world that he lives in and like who is right who is wrong I don't know obviously Galvatorix is wrong because he killed a shit ton of people okay well but. here's the deal <laughs> <laughs> like I guess it's just an interesting thing to think like what if we read the story from like the bad guy's point of view <clears throat> that's probably like the most interesting thing you've ever said <laughs> <laughs> that one stupid <laughs> fucking sentence. No, this is being a shit. Okay. But like, that's that's an interesting concept to think about, and I think that's like what they're. I think that's what Christopher Paolini is trying to like get you to get you to do is like think from it from a different perspective, and not just like Aragon's perspective. Like Oramis is kind of sitting there, like all knowing, being like, I could not possibly think of like only your mom could tell. But like, wouldn't that be an interesting story to hear the the story life of? Cause like, so what? Mama like, Aragon. Cause just because, just because she does bad things and might like, and cause what if she is like kind of a bad person? Like I do some shitty shit. Like, I feel like my shittiness is just like broadcast all over the internet. Yeah. Never realized I was such a judgy asshole. We're a great couple though. 
Wow. <laughs> you guys seem like a really nice couple. We're like, <laughs> we're unsure if this comment is sarcasm or if this dude was being serious. But he's like, you guys look like a great couple. And we're like, do we? I don't know what that I mean, means. like, I guess you and me interact in a fantastic way. P- perhaps. Wow. Perhaps. <clears throat> but I mean, like. I don't know if you noticed, but this has pretty much been like a shit posting page. Oh, like, I know. I was going to say, all we do is just fucking shit post on books. Oh. We talk about like some philosophical ideas sometimes and talk about Mostly some shit posting. Controversial topics and shit, but most of the time we're just shit posting on everybody. I guess it's like different when it's a fictional book because like it's not real. I, I, shitting on everything is fun. Yeah. If you can like take a step, if you can detach yourself. <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, though, after reading The Human Animal in that book. It's a lot easier to side with the I, uh, antagonist. or Oh, and you haven't seen you, unquote, have you? Antagonist. Haven't what? Seen you on Netflix? I've seen me. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> okay, Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen. So, because right before or after, I don't know. It was like the same time frame. I watched you on Netflix, which is seen from the perspective of traditionally the bad guy, but you like see it through like a sympathetic lens for him in a way. But then they like swap it and were like, no, he's a bad guy. Yeah. And then Shit. the That's human cool. animal, you see it from the traditional like bad guys point of view. And so I feel like, Oh yeah. Cause if you would have been on the meat eaters perspective, Mm-hmm. Like, that book would have been completely different. Yeah, he would have been, like, an awful tyrant. It would have been called, like, the animal human. Maybe. He'd <laughs> <laughs> have been like, fuck this AA dude. Black uh, ironclad body of the AA, fuck them. Like, you would have been, like, ripping the pages trying to get to the fucking... And he says, meat is murder, and you go, meat is delicious. Yeah, you'd been like, ooh, I'm gonna fucking eat so much meat. You'd been, like, eating a fucking Big Mac and a while Whopper reading. while reading. <laughs> meat is murder. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> oh, fuck you, ribs. <laughs> I definitely feel like having experienced like those stories in such like close proximity to like this story. I'm like Murtag like has a point. God, I would love to have like an entire book from <clears throat> like Murtag's young, mm-hmm. young, young in years, like do an Aragon, but from Murtag's perspective. Yeah. Cause I don't really need to know about him. Like as a fucking baby, but like where the shit starts to pick up to where it like yeah. leads into Aragon. And then be able to like internally hear Murtag's thoughts on all, all the situations. Like I always want to hear like, especially when like he finds out that Brahms dies. Mm-hmm. That would be like such an interesting perspective from from Murtag's to say like, "There's the man that killed my father." Like he's dead now. Yeah, like there's Brahm, the great whatever they mm-hmm. fucking called him, Varden boy. That's probably what they called him. Probably Varden Boy. (laughs) Certainly. (laughs) That's the story that, like, I want. Like, I always really want to hear, like, what the... the villain's perspective. Because... Because it's relatable. Yeah. Because I'm a bad (laughs) guy. (laughs) But, yeah, that's my story. That was a fantastic story. Thank you guys so much for... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and you're done talking now. Goodbye. I mean, I don't have, I really, I was trying to think of something else to say. I don't really have anything else to say. I do. I feel like, I don't know, for me at least, like that specific interaction with Ormus really like brought to light the like, what is good and evil? And maybe just because he like specifically used the words evil, maybe like in context of like his mother. And so it was like a little bit more close to home for us, like as the reader, we're like, oh, Galbatorix, so yeah, like he's a bad guy, like he's evil, like we don't care about him. But somebody who is related to our hero, his mother, was like a a bad guy, you know? And like maybe she did like enjoy doing those bad things. Like you don't know. Or like, like Ormus was saying, that Jode was saying, like maybe they were distorted and exaggerated. Mm-hmm. Like how do we know Galbatorix's feats or acts of atrocity weren't exaggerated and distorted through the lens of what people think like yeah. they're being oppressed by some tyrannical king and they're like oh my god he fucking flew out on his dragon he fucking killed us well what if they attacked him first 
Then it was like sl- hashtag defense. There's more of them. <clears throat> there was more of them. How'd they not fucking kill him? It's just like interesting. Also, um, in the Discord, on the like Aragon board, we were talking about like who our favorite characters were. And JDPC had mentioned that he was really interested in Galbatorix for a character to have never been seen three books into a series and be so feared. We haven't seen him really do anything. He has like his armies, but like, that's like not, you know, that's like normal that you would like see, but like no one has seen his face. He's not left his fucking castle. Well, that's kind of like, nah, I was going to say that's like kind of like Voldemort, but I guess we like saw him in the first second in the first and second mm-hmm. books but like you didn't see like him in his glory yeah until the fourth book and then he was like full power of Voldemort he was present though yeah he was for definitely such more like an than, absent like Galbatorix villain. could literally just like not exist Galbatorix could have died like doing a magical spell and blown himself up and like I'm really going with like the dread pirate Roberts thing you think Murtag is acting of his own accord no He's I like, just think oh. that cause I just I mean, yeah, sure. He's Galbatorx is probably or like Blackbeard alive. from Pirates of the Caribbean, where the where like Johnny Depp's like on the, uh, Queen Anne's Revenge, and he's like, "Wait, you guys were enlisted by Blackbeard?" And they're like, "Yeah." And like, did you guys see Blackbeard? And like, no. And like, and he sits in his quarters all day long and all night, and nobody's seen him or heard from him. And then they're like, "Yeah." And like, good news, everybody. This isn't Blackbeard's ship. Yeah, like that's. But he has such like a renown that like. Then once they find out it's not Blackbeard's ship, then they're all like, yeah, it's not Blackbeard. Then he walks out and they're like, oh, fuck, it is Blackbeard. Fuck. I just feel like there's something weird about us never, him not being present like at all. Well, what's that uh, art of war, whatever, the best, best tactic for like winning a fight is never even having to like unsheath your sword or some Mm -hmm. fucking thing like that. Like the best fight is the ones you never have to fight. I Best fights one are the ones you never have to fight in, you know? Probably. I've never read The Art of War. Me neither. I just know it's one of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just... Something is, like, weird about that situation. And I don't know if it's just because we haven't seen him and that's, like, normally something we see. Because then also he's, like, the king? Who is he? What the fuck is he? The Definitely the king. Okay. Um, so we have a king who doesn't fight alongside his soldiers, which like is kind of weird. Cause like, at least like historically, like IRL, like Kings fight with their, with their dragons. Yes. With the spells and everything. But mm-hmm. well, why would he just create that like vulnerability for himself when he doesn't have to? Like there's a chance that like somebody could kill him. Then like all of his plans are done. Yeah. I was going to send out his little, ar- his little armies to go play chess. I just. And then when things get serious, he'll just fly out on his fucking dragon and kill everybody. I guess. With I a just... magic spirit bomb hmm. or something, you know, just. I don't know. I don't know. Something's weird about it. That's all I know. I can feel it in my bones. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> well, that's Demi's theories, theory, theories, all of them. Well, thank you everyone so much for watching. If you guys liked the video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe as well and share this channel. Unless you don't want to share a shit posting channel with your friends. It's understandable. You just want to be like a low key, like secret shit. You want to be low key toxic. We got you. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one. Should we say, like, see you in the next one? They'd be like, peace out, bitches, or, like, peace out, fiends, or, like, yo, fiend squad, unite, fiend squad. And then we can all put our power Assimilate. rings together, and then we can turn into, like, a we all fucking... We'll put our fiend mu- coffee mugs together. Oh, shit. And then we become, like... If you have like... a caffeine and chaos coffee mug, then it also works. <laughs>